know what displeases me? When I've spent two hours taking something apart, cleaning it, and successfully putting it back together, only to find that my video camera stopped recording 20 minutes into the process. I need to make sure that this doesn't happen anymore, so let's give it a try. When I make these work surface type videos, I usually use three cameras. To make it easier to be certain my hands and subject are actually in the frame at all times, I purchased three Viltrox field monitors to mount on each camera. They're small, lightweight, and run off rechargeable batteries. I have run into one major issue, however. When the battery runs low and the monitor ultimately loses power and shuts down, the camera stops recording with no noticeable warning to me, resulting in missed content, which means I either have to re-record or scrap the project. The field monitors have power input jacks which means they can be operated without battery power. With the camera and lights already taking up all but one spot in my power strip, I didn't have room for three more power bricks. I settled on the idea of using one brick to power all three monitors. In order to do that, I need a 12 volt power source with enough amperage to run all three units, as well as some way to distribute that power to each monitor. The power brick was easy enough to source online, but I wanted to have a custom distribution box, because why not? It's easy enough to make something to split the power, it could have been done with some wire nuts and zip ties, but I wanted something a bit more permanent and professional. Enter KiCad, an open source electronics design automation suite which allows one to build circuit schematics, integrate electronic components from sources like Mouser and DigiKey, design printed circuit boards from that schematic, visualize the board in 3D space, and finally send the design off to a PCB manufacturer to create a physical product. In order to keep this video at a reasonable length, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to use KiCad. There are many great videos out there on this subject already. If you have specific questions about the program, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer any and all. It's really a simple circuit containing four power jacks that are connected together to distribute the power. One for input and three for output. I also added an LED with its current limiting resistor just to give some indication that the circuit is alive when powered up. My only real concern was to make certain that the traces on the board, essentially the wires that connect the power jacks together, were large enough to handle the maximum current required. The more current, the larger the trace needs to be. Each monitor is rated at 2 amps, giving a total draw of 6 amps. I believe that amount of current would only be used if the batteries were installed and the power supply was running the monitor as well as charging the batteries. I don't plan to use the system for charging, but I figured it was easy enough to add that into the design. KiCad has a built-in calculator that can help determine the proper trace width. Here I plugged in 6 amps and it gave me a trace width of 3.5 millimeters, so I added that into the design. The final part of the design was to add mounting holes for the board. Once those were in, I used the measurement tool to get all the necessary dimensions so I could build a box for the project Infusion. More on that in a bit. The last steps are to send off the board for manufacturing and order the parts that I don't have in stock. I've used PCBWay for a long time and have been really happy with them. KiCad has a plug-in that bundles all the necessary files and sends them off to PCBWay. Five of these boards cost five bucks, in fact, ten boards cost five bucks, so why not? Of course, the price is doubled because of shipping, but it's still very reasonable for the quality you get. I used to make circuit boards using a laser printer and iron, a sharpie, and ferric chloride, so 13 bucks to me is a steal. Next I moved over to Fusion. Some time ago I made a generic project box for 3D printing that utilizes the parameters feature of Fusion 
so I can plug in the size I need and the model is dynamically created. Again, there are dozens of videos on this topic on YouTube, so I won't go into the details on this one. I exported the 3D model of the PCB from KiCad and loaded it into Fusion. This allowed me to easily fit the project box parameters to the PCB, doing most of the work visually. I made standoffs on the bottom of the box for mounting the PCB. Even though I had all the measurements from KiCad, I was able to use the PCB model to transfer the mounting hole locations directly to a sketch and build the standoffs from that. Accurate and easy. Again, working visually, I edited the lid height of the box to perfectly fit the PCB. I cut out a hole in the lid for the LED and used the same process to cut out the sides of the box to gain access to the jacks. If you're enjoying this video, please strike a like and consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. With the box complete, I exported the STL files and sent them to the 3D printer. After about a week, my PCBs showed up. As usual, the quality is very high. With the box printed, I did a quick test fit. Looks good. The parts necessary to build this project are the PCB, a 510 ohm resistor, four power jacks, an LED, four 3 mm brass thread inserts, four M3 6 mm screws, four M3 8 mm screws, a project box, soldering iron, flux, insert tip, and solder. I'll leave links to the purchasable items in the description below. First, I like to do a quick continuity check on the board to make sure there's no shorts. Once that's done, the jacks are installed. I usually put a blob of solder on the iron, hold the jack in place from the bottom, and touch the iron to one of the legs, which usually is enough to hold it in place as I solder the rest of the legs. In similar fashion, the resistor and LED are soldered into position and the leads are trimmed. The threaded inserts are installed using the insert tool installed on the soldering iron. The insert is melted into the plastic until it just fits flush with the top surface. The PCB is mounted, the cover installed, and it's time for power. Ugh. No LED. What's up with that? As a sanity check, I checked the power supply. Well, 12 volts. Okay, open the box, take everything apart, and check the circuit for shorts. Yeah, everything looks good.
Then I realized I put the LED in backwards. Rookie mistake for sure. But it's a simple fix. Unsolder the LED and reinstall in the correct position. Let's check it now. Voila! At this point, I decided to add a couple inserts to the PCB standoffs as the screws in just the plastic were a bit loose. Everything is reassembled and it's time to try it out with a monitor. Next problem, the extension cables don't fit. They need a 1.6 millimeter pin in the power jack and the ones I got were 2.5 millimeter. Always something. Now fortunately the monitors do have a 1.6 millimeter pin so at least the extensions will work on that end. So, I could either redesign the board using jacks with a 1.6 millimeter pin, which I did, or I could see if I could get some adapters, which I also did. As I'm still waiting for the new PCBs to show up, I'll show you proof of concept with these adapters, which simply have provisions for a 1.6 millimeter pin on one side and a 2.5 millimeter pin on the other. All three field monitors are connected and powered up. No more missed videos due to dead batteries. Of course I could have pulled up my go-to online megastore and purchased something to take care of this issue with a couple of clicks, but sometimes you just feel like taking the long way home. By the way, I did finally receive my revised PCBs allowing me to use my 1.6mm jacks, so now my OCD can take a break. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments. I always enjoy hearing what you have to say. Well, now that I won't miss any more of those glorious moments, it's time to make some more videos. Until next time, I'm Main Jason. Get out there and give it a try. You know what displeases me? When I spend two hours taking something apart, cleaning it, and successfully putting it back together, only to find like... <laughs>